Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Slow Blink Anime Podcast. My name is Phil. I'm Candice. And today we are talking about ReZero. We're just doing a review of Season 1. It's uh, an anime that I love a bunch. It's in my top 10 for sure. And um, I'll see how Candice feels about it because this is one of my favorite animes of all time. And it, especially watching it the second time, it's uh, it just reminded me about stuff that, that I really enjoyed the first because I watched it right when it came out. And there's some stuff I missed and little details that I picked on later that really made a huge difference about how impactful some of these scenes are later in the anime. And season two is going out, it's coming out right now. I think there are four episodes in, but we've been holding off on watching those until we did the review of this. So after that, we'll be doing more um, weekly episodes of those once we catch up. Yeah. But yeah. So is this one that you <clears throat> like? For me, it's like one of my favorites for sure. And it's uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, uh, Subaru's voice actor and how he how he portrays him. But what do you think? What do you think? I think it's okay. Okay. It's not bad, but at the same time, it's not like mind blowing. Like you know, like yeah, it's a fun watch. It's very fun. It's Wait, okay. Is it what what takes you out of it? takes you out from being at like one of the top tier anime i can predict everything like it's so mm, readable like no. it's so easy i'm like i don't get excited in animes like that okay i have an example for you where you didn't predict what was going to happen okay it was i'm all not right. saying okay i'm not i'm not claiming that everything every little thing like Right on the dot, I can predict everything, but it's just so like it's not like mind blowing. Like I can, I can, you know, um, estimate, basically guess, have a general guess what's next. That's what's coming. Okay. It's not. It obviously it's not every detail, you know, but it's just in general, it's just so. All right. Know. So let's just do a quick overview of what the season one is about. It's, uh, it's following Natsuki Subaru. He's the main character, and he's from our world, from what we know. And he's just thrown into this alternate um, universe, so it's the isekai. And it's it came out at the same time as Konosuba, so those were like the top two isekai that were coming out. I think it was summer, I can't remember what year, but it was, um, I think, 2015. But it was so different because I think... It, it didn't follow the mold that was set from other isekai it wasn't as uh, I think the ones that were the tra the the trail not trail the pattern they were following was like the sword online pattern where we have this overpowered uh, main character and he's just so likable and everybody likes him mm -hmm. and he always uh finds a way to beat the the bad guy or the, beat the situation on the first try and that was like the mold that was set but in this situation he's in this new world and he's very he's he's an athletic person but he's not he doesn't have any special power he's just like some guy in that world and that's what helps him be not your typical isekai main protagonist and that's what kind of differentiated it from mm -hmm the the norm that was set by Sword Art Online because I think that's the anime that started the whole chain of isekai being popular and yeah. getting like this like following behind it and what was going on during that time in 2015 it was Konosuba and ReZero and those two were the two different isekai that, that broke the molds like I said before because this one was uh, not your traditional overpowered main character and then Konosuba was just like a comedy making fun of the isekai genre the whole time. Mm -hmm. That's the... Because those two... Uh, Konosuba is not one of my favorites, but it's... It's not one of the my top ten, but it's one of my favorites to watch just because it's so funny. And <laughs> then it, it makes fun of all the tropes that are happening. Because they have... Like, there's one character where she only knows one attack, but it's a super powerful attack. And she can't control it. And every time she uses it, she passes out afterwards. That's like the that's her only thing that she does, and she just wants to blow stuff up. The whole time. <clears throat> but um, let's go back to Rizzo. So <laughs> the uh, so the story's about we're following him, and he's 
trying to figure out what to do in this world and he gets involved with this girl named Amelia mm -hmm. and it turns out she looks like the main bad guy in this world which is the white witch the main antagonist yeah so he ends up falling in love with her in the first episode because she helps him and now he's uh, trying to help her achieve her goals whether she remembers what happens or not because his I guess his only like power is that once he dies, he returns to a checkpoint that he achieved at some point during that life in between. Yeah. So that's like his power, <clears throat> I guess. But he and he retains all the same memories of what happened yeah. for each life. But that's why it was it was interesting because he did have um like some kind of skill he used, but he wasn't he, OP'd. He didn't. He hasn't learned it. Or mm -hmm. I don't control it well enough yeah. just yet. Mm -hmm. So probably season two, he'll be able to control it better. Yeah. I don't know if there's even a way to control it. There probably is a way that maybe I feel like somebody's going to teach him how. Yeah. Or give him some kind of clue how to do it. Because the only way he can advance is if he has to meet like a checkpoint that he's not even sure of what he needs to do. But it's yeah. like accomplish a goal. And then that's his new checkpoint from where he starts. And then he yeah. can try to reset he calls it a return by death. by death yeah it was really cool but i thought uh, the story was interesting it's like i guess it's like a nine out of ten for me or eight out of ten i guess just because it's it was different at that time and when i was watching it it's um it just like impacted me because of the the characters because subaru is not like your main likable character like kirito would be he's like a character that has a bunch of flaws that that makes him very relatable and almost human because he doesn't like he does he has these feelings but he doesn't express them he doesn't vocalize them and the way he communicates them is not always the best way for example that one that one scene where he's with Amelia and after he just got done fighting with Julius mm -hmm. he he kind of like blew up on her and was yelling at her he's like I did all this stuff for you, so you should feel indebted to me. But the reason he was doing it was for selfish reasons, so he would feel good, not to help her. Yeah. And that goes back to what what I was saying is how the Subaru's voice actor. I need to look up his name real quick. But he was um. He conveys like this insanity and this selfishness to like so well, and he has the best cry I ever heard in any anime because the when. When um, Subaru's in pain, the cries he makes are just wonderful. Like you can just feel the the pain he's going through. I want to play that. Like, <laughs> I'll put a clip in. <laughs> All right, but uh, what, were you, what were you gonna say? I'm sorry, I cut you off. I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. But I, I'm just saying that it's an, it's okay. What did you not like Subaru, or what? Is no, like I get that that they made him to be unlikable like get that part and that worked because i fucking hate him but yeah. they did they did a really good job of making you hate him yeah because he's like him unlike. that's true but i mean i'm talking about you know the uh, the storyline in general um i don't know is he's just so I don't know, everything's just readable to me. Mm. Kobayashi Yusuke. Yeah, Kobayashi Yusuke is the, the voice actor. So click on I know him. I know it's like predictable, but is is that like how all shonen anime are? I mean they have the same like general story. Like you know what's gonna happen, but you weren't surprised at all watching it? Or you didn't feel like I didn't expect this? Like I don't know, like Maybe because I've watched so much animes that, like in each anime that I watch, my expectations just get, you know, get higher and higher. Like with SAO, at that time when it came out, I thought it was just the best anime ever that I ever <laughs> made because it was unique, it was different. Yeah. Um. But I mean, they messed up after the first season. season. Yeah, for after the first season, they messed up real bad, but. At the time, the first season at least, it was so it was so good. Like I loved it so much. Like I think it was my top anime. But 
but that was like the main storyline that was being unique it's not really much of the main character because i mean i get it that the main character brings the whole story or um but i care more about the storyline than anything because i i guess i would say i do applaud that if their goal is to make us hate subaru then they did a good job on that because i feel like he's really damn annoying and mm -hmm. just useless so well he's not completely useless, but he's just you don't think he, had, he had to learn throughout you know this journey of dying and yeah. repeating everything again so you don't think the the restore the story has enough like a good story would create good characters it's not a reflection on the story of how the you don't think so Like, you know, you don't think the situations that were built from the story in the world created that character to how he acts and how we perceive him? I don't know. Like, I mean, because well, I guess the <clears throat> I mean, let me give you an example. Like, he's such a contrast because he's from a different world. Yeah. So he he the I way he talks he talks different, and then he's like references are different clothing's different and the, the way he acts is really different yeah because I, I know a lot of times you said oh my god he's so annoying and it's like he doesn't know anything about this new world and everybody thinks that he's some tourist yeah yeah but um you don't think that's part of the story and the world building that helps no yeah learn? i get that like i get that it's just because i'm it, just saying nothing blew my mind except i mean I, 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 I really like the part i really do like the concept of him dying and being able to start over from the beginning and he's able to change literally everything mm -hmm. from dying and then going back to, to you know, to zero, mm -hmm. I guess. I get that. Like, I, I like that concept. I don't think I've ever watched anything that's, that has that kind of concept. And that's, I think, the one thing that I really like about this anime. That I think that's what made the anime more interesting than the other type other enemies that are the same type mm -hmm. that's what made it so unique okay um but for the actual storyline nothing really blew my mind like oh i didn't expect this from coming and they did a good job about it but it's like what? i knew what was next and i knew it was kind of obvious too that it was kind of like it was a harem anime too where he whatever he chooses is going to change the past like i told you this while we were watching so probably if he chose um, Rem, then it would be a whole different total story. And they kind of told us what it would be if he picked Rem, like, you know, them living in a province or whatever yeah. and building a family and they're having kids and they can scrape off every day until they build a house. And then I ask you, is there a game of this? Because it's kind of obvious that it's that type of anime. But he ends up picking Amelia, and then you search it up, and there's an actual game of it. But it's Plus not like a harem. It's not a you know? dating simulator game. Though. No, I know, I know that it's not. It's really not. But I'm just saying, based off just watching that anime, I could tell, like what it could or like. But it's there's something else. But but it wouldn't be that type of game then. Like I know, I know, I get that. I'm just saying that it's kind of. You know, it's it's predictable. I know. Well, I mean, it's I, I agree. But it's good. Like but the, it's interesting to watch. Like each time he dies, you would think, okay, what would he do next? Mm -hmm. I mean, what would he do something different next this time around? And then they did a good job of pissing me off at least. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he, I don't know if it did for you, but on which part? Like every time he dies, and he just freaking whines all the time, yeah. like like i don't know like there's so many things that if i was like if i was him i would have done this is this and problem solved but i know that they're building the character and i know they're doing it on purpose to make you mad because mm -hmm. you know that he could have been smarter but he's not and he had to learn so many times more than what it should be before he finally got it before he finally got something and finally get to a checkpoint and then he can move on to the next part of the story. Yeah. 
and then start start it all over again do it all over again you know I feel like every time he learns something from the dying yeah that's his checkpoint is what I'm thinking yeah I'm just getting I'm just hearing good things from you that's what all that's all it's good things what are you talking about cause like <coughs> It's making you feel a certain way. Like <clears throat> yeah, I know. But at the same time, it's not mind-blowing to me because it's readable. It's, it's just kind of... Like, see, I, like, see well, I have to go back to SAO. Like what you mentioned. <clears throat> at that time, it was mind-blowing to me because it's different. Mm -hmm. It was like... Like, a lot of the times, I didn't know, okay, what's going to happen next? Like I was, uh, like I was thinking. It it was making me think. Like, what's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. What is he gonna do? <clears throat> but for this, I can tell what the heck he's gonna do. And I know that damn well. The next time he does anything, it's not gonna be a smart move. And you can tell when he finally starts doing smart moves, and that's when, you know, like everything falls apart where it should be. Mm -hmm. It was. Yeah. Like you anyway, but that that's that's my part. That's my kind of opinion about it. Okay. I mean that's I mean it's understandable. It's not <laughs> don't be I don't sad. hate you for it. <laughs> you sound like you despise. It's like you don't hear my arguments at all. <laughs> no, I do. But I'm saying my part. I know. I but I get what you're saying. <clears throat> and I I acknowledge everything that you said. <laughs> I value your opinion. <clears throat> I value your opinion. So now I'm explaining why right. it's average so in let general. Me, <clears throat> so there was one part. Uh -oh. This is what I can tell you at the beginning. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> Since you say it's so predictable. <clears throat> there was one part when he was, it was after he fought Julius, right? And that is his checkpoint after he yelled at Amelia. All right. And then he's supposed to get healed by Felix. Do you okay. remember that? It's like it was like the one of the <clears throat> second to last ones, but you said he was just gonna keep dying and keep training and training and training. No, I didn't say that. That's what you did. I said that now he's gonna train to get better. Mm -hmm. Is what I said. No, he said he was gonna keep training. No, he's not gonna. I didn't say that. I said yes, that now he's gonna. I said now he's gonna train to get stronger. Is what I said. But I didn't say he's gonna keep training and training. But I feel like he was going to train. Okay. Keep going. I burned it in my mind. Okay. <laughs> Keep going. Well, he didn't do that. <clears throat> That's what I was going to say. But but I feel like in a typical anime, he would have done that. Right? That's true, but... It would have been like a montage of him just like dying and then going back and then dying and going back, dying and going back. Because that's when he was training with the old man. Well, yeah, but then again, when he dies, the old man's not going to remember that he needs to train him. You know? Like, it might be a different outcome. But what I was saying, I was saying, like, that lifetime, that... Well, he had done it a few times, the training. Yeah, but he, like, it's not like he's going to remember, the old man's going to remember, okay, where's your progress? You know, kind of like that. Well, he would have been starting off from that point. He would know how to train him from there because he's a master swordsman. Yeah. So pretty much any level he could... <clears throat> practice with yeah okay <laughs> okay let's and then that was it he didn't do that yeah but every other else like basically predicted in my mind i need and we I, gotta talk about it then but anyway so i thought that was gonna happen but then again that was a smart move but he's stupid and so he mm -hmm. he didn't do that and so yeah i mean i just I feel like you're... But he's more of like... He eventually learned to be more... I mean, he finally accepted the fact... Sorry. He finally accepted the fact that he's... He can't do anything. He's weak. He doesn't have powers. But what he can do is... Finally, after like a million deaths... He can help by being tactical. Like what he knows... Mm -hmm. From you know what he learned from the previous life mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then he can finally um help everything out yeah. by negotiating things instead of forcing things yeah he can use the knowledge from his and i feel like yeah i feel like that's kind of like his turning point and it was where, it was right after that whole speech with rem too that's when he started getting his stuff together what'd yeah. you think about that 
Like everybody else, like he's an asshole. For real? Yeah. Did you? I mean, I thought I thought the same thing. <clears throat> but um, I think what a lot of people don't talk about is the his like self hate speech he did right after that or right before that. I can't remember. I think it was right before. What do you mean? Where he was talking about how, where he kind of like said all his feelings that he was keeping inside mm-hmm. about why he was acting the way he was acting mm-hmm. and how selfish he was. Yeah. And now I think that was. And how he felt worthless too. Mm-hmm. That was the main thing. I think a lot of people. Um, like he's oh I remember like he's saying that he wants he wants something but he doesn't even work hard for it. Yeah, and I'm so weak and. Yeah, it's like I want to be strong, but at the same time I'm not even working hard to be strong. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I think that's like <laughs> I don't know. It feels like the the writer had some like they put their own personal feelings into how this character is. They must have had um, situations where they felt like that with the writer of the story. And I feel like it's very, it's, I guess, more, it's kind of common for a lot of people to feel that way because I'm, I'm sure, like, at some point in our lives, we've been in that situation and been too, like, afraid to vocalize these emotions. Yeah. Yeah, I just, it just felt really raw and real at the same time. Yeah. I was reading that. I mean, uh, watching that. Yeah. And I think there's a there's a sense of like like he embodies like a humanity for this mm-hmm. world that he's in, where everybody mm-hmm. has some some kind of purpose, yeah. and then he doesn't yeah. almost, you know. And I guess that's like, and then finally it's Rim that gets him to. Like get his stuff together and try yeah so that's why i mean it's like moments like that throughout the whole show that makes me really enjoy it and like it so much what and then of course too like when <clears throat> ram was like confessing his love to and he's like i love amelia that was the i was like i couldn't i didn't know what to say when i watched it that first time i was like i can't believe this is happening are you serious yeah well i knew he didn't love Rim, but i didn't like who would say like I don't love like like you confess him. to somebody yeah that's what I'm saying who does that him did you you knew he was gonna say yes that? he was gonna say I love he, Amelia no but he was gonna basically reject her and say like I'm not doing this for you I'm doing everything for Amelia is what I'm thinking I mean not word for word but that's what he's gonna say yeah. but he said it in a way where you know I love Amelia and I can't be with you but at the same time can you help me achieve Amelia the love of my life you know like their goal her goals like can I break your heart but at the same time still be with me and help me out like I knew he would have to he would have to tell her very clear he would have yeah he would have to tell her and I knew that that was the moment that he would tell her I didn't think he'd do that to her because she was talking for like 10 minutes no yeah and i know that they're doing that on purpose too they're making you want him to pick ram but we all know that he's not going to pick ram and so they did that on purpose like to make us all think that he's a fucking asshole yeah which we all know like he has been they did a good job lord but um what about um so we all hate subaru so what about the supporting characters what do you think of them I know a lot of people find Amelia very unlikable. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't see anything <clears throat> that she did wrong. I think she's just trying to be like a good person. I think I think what everybody wants is in a character is that do not be, be kind enough, but not be too kind, which Amelia is too kind. Mm-hmm. Um, be strong enough, but at the same time not strong enough or be, but at the same time weak enough to improve something mm-hmm. it's I think typical characters that everybody likes yeah um, but Emilia with Emilia I think she's too kind is her problem um, and I think that's why like a lot of people might hate might not like her mm-hmm. I think she's okay I think her character I like her character design I think she looks really pretty 
Um, but you know, silver hair, long silver hair, mm. kind of typical for your, like for for that character anyway. What do you mean? Like the way she looks. Um. What? <laughs> <clears throat> like um. Like you know. Some of the animes out there were you know, black long hair with a flat banks, with mm-hmm. full banks. It's kind of like that. It's like, you know, looks the same as everybody else. Oh, okay. Kind of like that. Like nothing too unique about the character. Nothing, the physical, physical wise, oh, okay. physical look wise. Mm, again, too kind. I think she's okay. <laughs> Um, I know you did like what I do wonder is that I think I told you this before like why does the other can candidates why do they have this whole army or not a whole army but it's like they have this whole staff of people working for the mansion working for her and Amelia has like what Rose Rosewall Puck Beatrice um, Rem, Rem, and Rem. Rem and Rem mm-hmm. and then that's it I think and then this... one big mansion I think it's because, I don't know if I had said it, but I think Roswell adopted her, but it didn't explain why or how. Because mm. it was in like the end credits where she was like growing up in the mansion. Mm. And then she, I think she even said too that she doesn't have a lot of friends because she's only been yeah. there. If we're going to talk about my favorite character, I would go with either... I like Cruz. Cruz? How do you say her name? Cruz. Cruz. I like Cruz. I like Beatrice. And I like Roswell. Didn't you like um, the Swordsman too? Ben Austria? Can't remember his first name. Wilhelm? Wilhelm? Oh yeah, I like Wilhelm too. But you know, he's your typical old guy experience and everything and teaches and everything. But he reminds me of, like, I don't know why, Jiraiya. <laughs> It's weird, mm. but like in very different ways. Just kind of like that mentor to yeah. everybody. Um, that's what that's the vibe that he get that I get from him. But I like Roswell because of his mysteriousness. The fact that I don't know much about him makes me want to know a lot about him. Mm-hmm. I want to know more about him more than I want to know about Emilia. Like I don't care about Emilia. <laughs> she's I mean she's a princess and whatever. Like looks like the witch probably born the same freaking mother and then they just separate or whatever they're both half elves looks freaking the same or she could be like some fucking clone of Emilia anyway but um sorry, I think it's okay. but anyway so I like Rosal because just his mysteriousness um and I want to see what Roswell can offer you know like I guess power-wise fighting. Well, they said he was like the strongest mage in the the country or something like that. I like the fact that they mentioned that, but they didn't show the show show it right away. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a little suspense about him. The only thing they showed us him fighting was when he killed that um, the shaman dog that was uh, attacking oh, Subaru. Yeah, the curse that. When, yeah, when he just came right on yeah. time. And yeah. then they. St- and then him being able to fly so fast to yeah. see how powerful he is. <clears throat> but that was like the only thing we saw of him. Yeah. Oh, and then when he was fighting um, Beatrice in one of the okay. realities, you can see that she's powerful too. I like Beatrice too because she's another mysterious one mm-hmm. that I want to know more about. And we know they showed how, well, they didn't fully show, but we know that she's powerful. We just don't know yet how powerful, because we haven't really seen her fight yeah. too much. I like her too, and, and she's pretty smart, and she makes sense. She's logical. I love her. She makes sense. Mm, and then who else did I say? I like uh, Roswell, Beatrice, and... Oh, I forgot. Rosal Beatrice, not Ram. Krush. Krush. I like Krush. Again, she's a smart, she's a smart girl. She's a smart character. And she's not your typical princess. I know that Amelia fights too. She's a little too 
timid and feminine to, I don't know, like, do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Krush is like, she gets on dirty, she gets on right on the front lines. She gets what needs, she, she does what needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because she led the, the army against the, the white whale. Yeah. Yeah, she pretty much did, and and she just, you know, she's not your typical mm-hmm. princess, maiden, whatever. Yeah, and, you know? and then you probably liked it, too, the, after they fought, and then uh, Subaru was talking to her at the end. He's like, if um, if I wasn't, like, uh, tied to Amelia, I'd probably, like, fall in love with you. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, no, I'm, like, in, oh, I'm in love with the... He said if he didn't have, like, two, like, top two or something. Oh, yeah, like top that. two. <laughs> That, he, that would have been like dangerous or yeah. something <laughs> he would have fallen in love with her and then she was like she just dismissed it because she just cared about um ruling the kingdom yeah she's like your second thought <laughs> but that's funny i do like her too i like all the characters you mentioned and then i did want to ask you too um i know you every time beetle geese came on you like beetle geese <laughs> he's just funny he's yeah. just I think they did a really good job picking a voice character for him because mm-hmm. the other fingers they were talking the same way as him uh same you know body movements but the voice acting is not as good as him mm-hmm. i thought either whoever the voice actor was did a really fine job so good. but did, what was it just because how crazy he was yeah speaking? How, how crazy it is and the, his movements too. Yeah, his movements. I think, I think they did a good job with him. How he looks, he just like you know, like right off the bat, he's a fucking psycho. The way he talks, the voice acting was really good. He just, he just funny to me. Yeah, he was. I really liked him a lot, and his um. Like his his pattern, the way he spoke, you said they all followed it too. Like I was impressed with the other voice actors being able to follow the same pattern. Yeah. But like the um, like the intonation and like the tone of everything, the way he was speaking, you can just tell like like a psycho. Like it was tearing his like <laughs> throat apart to do it. It's just so. He did it so good. His uh. Um, Matsuoka Yoshitsugu. Yeah. Let's see what else he's done. He's in Oh How to Ride. He's one of those characters. Oh, the cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe this. Let's see. Oh, I watched it. Go, go up. Which one? Arata. Uh, I watched the anime. Which one? Arata Kung. Oh, never mind. No, it's not that one. <laughs> but yeah, he mm. did a he did a good job. And then any scene with him Cold was Gears? like. I don't know this person. Naruse Yukiya. Is that the brother, Yuki? Is that the? Oh, yeah. He's in the. He's in the terrorist group. He's in Eleven. Wait. Oh, never mind. I don't know this person. Oh, but um, any scene with him was like super dramatic, and like especially the one. The scene that was the worst and one of the hardest to watch was when he captured uh, Subaru and then Rim comes to save him mm-hmm. and then sh- he just uses the invisible hands to kill her and he just twists her mm-hmm. her neck around and her, her arm. body. And then it was worse too was after he left uh, and then it's kind of like that scene in Berserk too with the with the what's it called the eclipse mm-hmm. where like everyone's dying. It's like it reminded me of that scene because Subaru is just like He's in his chains and he can't get to her and he can't help and mm-hmm. he's just screaming. Yeah. And it was just terrible because after that, Rim was like dragging her body, like just with her neck, trying to get to Subaru. And then what she did was she broke the handcuffs, like she didn't even try to heal herself. Yeah. So it was just, it was real painful. And that's when he went into like one of his crazy phases, Subaru. But yeah, let me see. Trying to find some that we know. Mm. He's in a lot. Oh, he's in Nosuke from Demon Slayer. Oh. He's one of the main characters. Kill. Cool. Mm. 
Love Lab. Mob Psycho? I don't know this character. There's two. He voiced two different ones. Yeah. Mob Psycho. No game, no life. Sora? Oh, he's Sora. <laughs> so, Beetle Geeks is Sora. That's crazy. That's crazy. Holy shit. I can't even imagine it. <laughs> he did a good job. Shokugeki no Soma? Oh, he's Soma too. Shoku and Shokugeki. Damn. God, this guy's talented. <laughs> Sword Online, he's Kirito. Oh my god. SAO. Wow. <laughs> he did a drastic change with his voice, man. It's like all these cool main characters and yeah. then the psycho fucking character. Whistle, he's Tepe. This is a manga I read. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, God. Oh, he did a good job. Props to Yusuke. <laughs> <laughs> anyway he was one of the main characters that really stood out i mean uh the bad guys that stood out mm -hmm. and um i mean he was kind of like for a while he was the main antagonist for you know kind of like a side main antagonist yeah the whole he, he had to he had to beat but yeah mm -hmm. but yeah that's i think that's Pretty much everything we covered in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. We're excited to see season two. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? No. <laughs> How would you rate it? It's like a nine out of ten for me. This is my top. It's in my top ten favorite anime. God. What about you? Like five. Really? Five point five. We saw what was the other thing we saw the other day? Kakegurui? No. Yeah, Kakegurui. You you like that's on the same level as Kakegurui. Again, Kakegurui is kind of unpredictable to me. That's why I loved it. We need to talk about this scaling. <laughs> we need to discuss this. See, one of my. We need how, to have how, a scale where it's like you, story, okay, characters, let me ask music. You, let me ask you. How are you rating your animes? Like just. Uh, I'm thinking about the story. I'm thinking about the characters. I'm thinking about the music. And I'm thinking about, like, the, I guess, the predictability or shock value would be one. And then, like, the emotional feelings. So that's just, like, my biased opinion at the end. But I don't have, like, a scale where I mark it. That's just all I'm thinking about. See, me too. But me, when I say storyline, I'm talking about how unique the storyline is. That goes with predictability for me. Because I feel like predictability, predictability and storyline go goes hand in hand to me. Um, like, see. Uh, but like, I think the like Kakegurui story is like so simple, but it's unpredictable. What's gonna happen, right? But the thing is, we don't even we've watched two seasons, two seasons, right? Yeah. But we don't even know much about her. It's like, we need to know about her, but at the same time, they haven't really shown much about her until towards the end when they finally showed her mother is a little bit about herself. But I get, I get what you're, I get what you're saying though. So I look at the predictability and how much I can. Cause I mean, if I can pretty much, you know, general, like so-and-so um, predict in general, what's gonna happen, you know, roughly in the next coming episodes or the next, what's gonna connect the storyline. It gets me so bored, cause it's like, oh shit, I was right. Like, you know, like, what's the point? It's just, that's just me anyway. Now if it's something new, like it's really something new that blows my mind. See, it's a whole different story. I'm gonna say Attack on Titan at the time, fucking awesome to me it was something different for me and so at that time it was one of my top SAO same thing when it came out um but anyway so that's that we ain't talking about this, this <laughs> is... I'm distraught right now 
Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This is uh, we're talking about ReZero. It's more like a review than anything else, and just stuff yeah. that we liked and what we didn't like. Um, yeah, we're gonna start watching season two starting pretty soon. Uh, we're gonna catch up with it, and we'll have these episodes out as fast as we can. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure y'all like, subscribe. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit, and you can listen to us on the go on all the major podcasting apps and sites. Thank you all for watching. Let us know your thoughts about this anime. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time.